Good morning, everyone. The Lord be with you. Welcome to St. Matthew's to our service of Holy Communion. I know some of you are joining us on Facebook, some on YouTube, some on Vimeo. Wherever you are, it's great to be able to worship with you this morning. Hopefully, we'll see you all at 10.30 a.m. for our Zoom coffee time, and then again between 12 and 12.30 for our administration of Holy Communion here at the church parking lot. As we worship this morning, uh, we do remember that some of you are not going to be able to join us, and you will find the prayer uh, for spiritual communion at the end of the service, so you can draw close to God, remembering His promise that He will also draw close to you. So with the psalmist this morning, we say, I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. We praise God together in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. And the collect set for today is the collect for proper 11. We pray together. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reverend Don Gardner is going to be coming forward now to read the gospel. Thank you, Don. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the 13th chapter of Matthew, beginning at the 24th verse. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at the harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn." All these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophets. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, and the field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all cases of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be beeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the gospel of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you ever wonder why things aren't better than they are? In the gospel, we proclaim that Jesus has conquered sin and death and the powers of hell. But as we look around us, as we pick up the newspaper, as we watch the news, we see a world that seems to be mad, a world that is out of control. And we wonder why that is. The tension between the present reign of Christ and life as we experience it is felt by the writers of the New Testament as well. And for example, in Hebrews 2, chapter, uh, verse 8, we read, In putting everything in sub subjection to Christ, God left nothing outside of his control. At present, though the writer acknowledges, we do not see everything in subjection to him. Do you get that? Everything has been placed under his control, but right now we don't see that as we look around us. 
We don't see that control being worked out in maybe the way that we'd like to. If Jesus is in control, the question is, in the back of our minds, why is there still so much suffering and rage and pain? Well, it's possible that even in the back, farther back in our minds, there's another question or a thought. I would do things differently. I'd put an end to it. The problem with these kinds of impulses is we're human. We have a very limited perspective. We rarely see the big picture. Jesus tells us this parable, the parable of the weeds, as it's called, in part to help us see the world around us with new eyes. There are a few points I'd like to draw from the parable this morning. Firstly, Jesus assures us that the day of judgment is coming. A new world, a world without sorrow, suffering, and pain, a world without sin is coming. Justice is going to be done, Jesus says. But it's going to come according to the Father's timing, not ours. Right now, Jesus is doing something else. He is sowing the seeds of his kingdom. That's what the proclamation of the gospel is all about. Wherever and whenever the gospel is preached, seeds are being sown, and those seeds are growing into children of the kingdom. The day of judgment is going to come, but right now, Jesus is telling us, we're living in a season of grace, the season of the gospel. So far, so good. We can probably appreciate a God who's patient, can't we? But still, we wonder, why is it so bad? And that brings us to the second point. There are two sowings happening at the same time, Jesus says. He's not the only one who's sowing seeds in the world. There's another one who hates Jesus and hates everything that Jesus loves. And that one is sowing seeds of his own. We're speaking of the devil, of course. While Jesus is sowing the seeds of his kingdom, Satan is sowing the seeds of his own world order. And he's doing it in the very same field, the field of the world around us, the life that we live and we share in together as uh, Canadians, as, as human beings. Well, fair enough, we might say, but that can still bring us back to our first question. Why not bring the judgment now? We look around, we're fairly sure who the bad guys are, most of us, a lot of the time. And why not deal with them at the same time that the gospel's going out? Well, sometimes God does this. You can think in the book of Acts about Ananias and Sapphira, people within the church whom God judged rather dramatically and fearfully. But they do seem to be the exception rather than the rule. And here's why, and this is the third point. It isn't always easy to tell the weeds and the wheat apart. The weeds in Jesus' parable are probably a plant called bearded darnel. It's a nasty kind of a plant with black poisonous seeds. But the thing about this particular one is, in its infancy, it looks just like wheat. You can't tell the two plants apart until they've both matured. So the people that we might identify as, as Darnell, bearded Darnell or weeds in God's kingdom might well not be. We think we can tell them apart, but we can't, not yet. And this has implications for the way that we look at people. Think about the people that most of Jesus' contemporaries would have dismissed out of hand. They would have identified them as weeds. Think about the tax collectors, the prostitutes, and the other various sinners. Uh, the Pharisees had already handed these people over to judgment in their minds, so they were scandalized when they saw Jesus sitting with them and eating and drinking with them. What did he know that the Pharisees didn't? He knew that some of them were not weeds, they were in fact wheat. They might not have known it yet, but they belonged to him. And we're going to include our very own patron, St. Matthew, as among those numbers. He would have been dismissed as a, as a tear, as a weed, by all of those uh, who had been around him. But Jesus saw Matthew for who he was and for who he was going to be. The same goes for Saul of Tarsus. If you were a Christian living in those first years, around the time when Stephen had been stoned to death and Saul raised up, uh, was raised up as a 
a wolf seeking to devour the church, you would have been pretty sure that he was a weed. He was bearded Darnell. He was a destructive force. But if we had called fire down on him, those early Christians, uh, as they may have wondered whether they should, we never would have had St. Paul, the man who wrote a third of the New Testament and who became the apostle to the Gentiles. The point I'm making, beloved, is that Jesus is making, uh, and the point that Jesus is making in this parable is that we don't know who will turn out to be wheat at the end of the day. So we need to walk with great humility, trusting that God knows, God is wise, and we can trust him to do what's right at the right time. There's something else about Darnell that's important to the story as well, and Jesus brings this out in the parable, as you'll remember. The roots of the bearded Darnell plant get tangled with the roots of the wheat. If we tear up the Darnell now, Jesus is saying, it would be as damaging to the wheat as it was to the weeds. And this is a word to the church, of course, to those who have ears to hear. It's also worth bearing in mind as we as a society work through some of the, the racial and other convulsions that are damaging uh, us right now. It's very easy to look around and see uh, the other side and identify as class, classes of people or races of people as being the ultimate font of harm and evil. But we need to be very careful because as we seek to destroy something, one, we might be behaving unrighteously, and two, even in destroying the things that we think we should, we might be doing great damage to the good things, the things that give us cohesion as a society, that give us a future. But coming back to the parable itself and its word to the church, Jesus is painting on a large canvas here. It's a big canvas. The field is the world itself. But as we draw close, here are some of the things that we can take away from this, things that I hope will be as encouraging for you as they always are for me as I read this passage. Firstly, as bad as things are, and they are bad out there, we need to remember that there are also wonderful things happening in the world around us as well. Typically, it's the bad that does capture our attention. The truth of the matter is, though, that we are living in a season of great grace. There is beauty uh, happening all around us as well. The gospel is going out. Lives and cultures are being changed. The leaven of the kingdom is working its way throughout the world, preparing it for the age to come. So it's easy to look around and see only the weeds, but we want to see as Jesus does. And as he looks around, he sees the wheat. Today's passage also assures us that there is justice in the universe. It may not come according to our schedules, but it is going to come. And just as importantly, because Jesus is the one who is going to judge, we can trust that it will be just and truth. Uh, if it was me or you, we might think we have the wisdom to judge uh, well and wisely, but we don't. Jesus does. Only he can see the final outcome of this world that we're living in, and only he can be trusted to bring it to its appropriate conclusion, not just as a world, but for individuals as well. Today's passage reminds us that we can and we must leave it in his hands. Instead of trying to take up this this burden ourselves, Jesus is setting us free, free from fretting and free to focus on the things of the kingdom, the things that he actually has called us to do. Our task is to carry on this ministry of Jesus to the world around us, sowing the, the seeds of the kingdom, uh, allowing people to hear that there is a God who is just and holy, but who is loving and gracious and who is calling them to himself. So, beloved, take heart today. Take heart and say with me in response to the great good news of a God of holiness and grace, thanks be to God. I'm going to invite you to join me now as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now Bob Rando is going to lead us in the prayers of the people. Thank you, Bob. Let us pray for the church and for the world, for the peace of the whole world, and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In these COVID pandemic days, we pray special grace and wisdom for our faithful shepherds, bishops, priests, and all, and oneness for your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and even in these times of distancing, we pray a strong, renewed ministry of discipleship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are being persecuted for their faith, we pray your saving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority and for all in public service, both in our governments and in public health agencies, we pray a pathway through this COVID-19 wartime. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our community and for every community and for our schools, we pray a pathway, a best pathway forward through many unknowns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For good weather and for abundant harvests, for food, most especially for the poorest communities and nations, more fearful of starvation than of the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in difficult everyday troubles and sorrows and needs and sickness and adversities, and especially those fighting the COVID battles, we pray your saving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Remembering that it is God's kindness that brings us to repentance, let us can humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Take a moment of time to greet those who are next to you and exchange the peace. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord,
Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that he may dwell in us and we in him and bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. Now we pray the prayer which our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. So, beloved, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.